Hey everyone, today I am here with a good friend and uh, one of the best loan officers in the state, Jeremy Devaney of Fairway Mortgage. Thanks so much hey, for having me, man. <laughs> awesome. Um, so with the rising interest rates and you know all the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that is uh, being spread by the media, um, I get a lot of questions from my buyer and seller clients about you know what I see is happening in the market. Um, is it even a good time to be a buyer or a seller? And um, what they should do with their properties are really you know, where I see things going, but um, I try to tell them that it's, yes, interest rates are rising, but it's really becoming more of a normal market. And over the past couple of years with the low interest rates, um, you know, the high twos and threes, it's actually mm. pretty abnormal. So what do you see is happening with a lot of your clients now in the market? And where do you see things going in the next three to six months? Sure. Yeah, we, we tend to agree with you that it's becoming a much more normalized, balanced market. We're seeing a lot of buyers still still active in the market, even though rates have come up. Uh, there were a lot of very well qualified buyers that were sitting on the sidelines waiting for their moment. Now they're seeing less competition because some folks have started going to the sidelines. Some sellers are really trying to rush to market now because they think they may have missed the top. So we're seeing a little bit more inventory. And then there's a, a thir third item that we're seeing in market it is as uh, as some some of these buyers that were in market owning multiple properties, some folks are starting to de-risk a little bit. And you're going to start to see some of those properties come to market. There hasn't been a flood of that activity yet, as far as we've seen from our, our borrowers. But, you know, we'd love to hear what you're seeing from your investors. There are a lot of people that we're working with either are trying to sell their second homes and they're wondering if they missed the boat, as you mentioned, or they are still kind of um, either first time home buyers or they're stepping up from, yeah. uh, you know, their starter homes. And it seems like uh, even this past weekend, I was out with some clients whose, you know, price range was ideally about a million dollars, maybe a little mm -hmm. bit more. And now I, you kind of talked about how they have to readjust. They're now looking at more of the 899 to 850, just mm -hmm. because of that fluctuation in the interest rates. And, you know, we did still see a good amount of other potential buyers out there. The demand is still there, but um, it is people have to be kind of readjusting their expectations sure. and maybe, um, but there weren't as many offers, right? Cause I spoke with the listing agent and instead of, you know, maybe 10 offers uh, a few months ago, it's now three and there might yeah. be one or two good ones. That's, but. that's exactly what we're hearing. Instead of 10 offers, you're, you're up against one or two others. You know, sometimes you're seeing things close much closer to list price. So, you know, it's costing you a little bit more on the interest rate, but at the same time, you're not going to be paying significantly more than list price. You're not going to be getting overbid nearly as much. So still that opportunity. And it seems like the people who are kind of getting priced out now are the people who are maybe looking for that 3% interest rate and looking at a starter home and maybe 650,000, sure. but now they have to bump down to say 500,000. And that's when the inventory is just so scarce. So maybe they have to look at other towns right. or other options. But again, um, I still think a lot of buyers and uh, you know, the sellers are obviously still gonna be in good shape because mm -hmm. there will be buyers out there. But um, as long as people can have realistic expectations and just kind of do their homework by talking to their lender and talking yeah. to their real estate agent they can still be in good shape. You, you really want to get an idea of what you can afford comfortably and what, what's a comfortable number for you and not, not overreach that budget. That way, you know, if a recession happens, if, if layoffs come, if the market kind of tapers here for a little bit, you know, that is a normal part of the market. Markets have ups and downs as they continue and people should prepare and, and prepare for their risks appropriately. So have a conversation with us about what a good affordability number is for you and to move forward. For people that are well qualified and that affordability number is less of a concern and you're trying to be opportunistic, this market's not going to shift for a while. You should be putting your money into assets. If you're a renter, you're just lighting your money on fire. Right. It's only going to get more and more and more expensive as that inflation number get, goes up. If you fix your payment and put, put it into an asset, that asset valuation is going to go up over time. Mm -hmm. And so you're actually protecting yourself against the inflation over a period of time while you're fixing your housing payment. Right. You're getting two benefits for, for the cost of one. So it, it's protection at the same time is stabilizing that, that, that payment for yourself. At least you didn't wait because, you know, all the big uh, 
you know, real estate financial institutions, they say that even next year, property values are supposed to increase at, you know, 8% and the following year, 5% and the following year, maybe 4% if things, you know, trend that way, where it's been 15 to 20% um, increases in property values over the last couple of years. So it's still gonna be more expensive to buy a house next year, regardless of what happens sure. in the interest rates. Um, so that's why, you know, people are still fearing the, the worst, or I guess even a recession, but, uh, I was speaking with my real estate coaches just the other day and they, you know, were kind of showing me some graphs where during four of the last six recessions, um, actually the housing market became stronger. Mm -hmm. And one of them, it decreased about 1%, 1.5%, which is really nothing. And the other one was, I've seen it. The, yeah, the housing crisis of 2008, which was caused by just over lending, which is never going to happen again. It, it's, it, it's a brilliant chart because it, it clearly points out that a recession, that one on. a recession does not equal a housing crisis. Right. A recession does not equal a decline in home values. What a recession means is you have two quarters, successive quarters of negative GDP growth. We, yeah. had, we had one in the first quarter, and I, I'm betting that we're going to have one in the second quarter print when we see, see it in July. And so what's going to happen is people are then going to realize we're already in a recession. You don't have to wait until 2023. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We're still kind of okay. Inflation's running away. The market's still growing. We're going to continue on this path for a little bit as the market fluctuates, but it's a natural ebb and flow of the market. Right. It doesn't have any direct correlation to the real estate market. So it's, uh, which people, you know, in the news kind of puts in people's heads that they mm -hmm. have to be, a bubble's coming, you know, a bubble's going to burst, I should say. At some point, you've got to deal with how am I going to pay for housing? What's my housing cost look like? And you got to have a conversation with a guy like me or a guy like you Both. to really figure out what that number looks like. Exactly. I mean, it's, um, you know, you just really can't be focused on the media or even your neighbor or your friend or maybe sometimes your family who, uh, you know, takes their information from an untrusted source and just kind of makes you panic. You don't need to be panicking as much as some people are right now when you really just, if you can ask a professional about the facts and what's actually going on, because as we've been touching on the whole time, interest rates are going up, but there's a lot of other factors in play that still make it a pretty good time for a buyer and a seller. I, I think it's a great time for people to be in the market. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're going to see a much improved market versus last year in terms of your ability to be a buyer and, and sellers, but buyers are still out there. Your, your prices are actually at, at peak levels right now. They're stable, they're not going down. We're just seeing fewer bidders on the market. So, you know, keep after it, keep plugging away, bring those houses to market for us. We've, yeah. got, we've got buyers lined up. The one last thing uh, we touched on the other day when we briefly spoke, but it was kind of the higher end buyers and sellers um, because, you know, I, I know that the people who are looking at the say lower end homes, you know, maybe a yeah. million dollars or below, um, they really focus on the rates and their, you know, buy decisions will be completely, sure. you know, have to be adjusted because of them. But what about, you know, the two and a half million dollar properties? What about those buyers? Are they going to be as focused on the rates and their purchasing decisions? Less focused on the rate. Again, it, it depends on where their wealth is coming from and how they're going to finance that property. There are people that were making asset decisions based, based on how they wanted to finance their property. Do they want to pull cash out of the market? Do they have other places they can gain leverage to, to borrow cash from, either margin against assets they, they hold or margin against the house that they hold elsewhere? So you, you got to look at your, co your cost of borrowing still in a lot of those situations, mm -hmm. but they're less sensitive to it. You're still seeing a lot of transactions take place at enormous prices. Yeah, and, and sure. I think increasingly you're seeing portfolios of money being opened up for that non-qualified mortgage type product, that high high dollar amount product. Um, so if you're borrowing a million, million and a half, two million dollars, there, there's some really unique, interesting products out there to help you achieve it. Excellent. Yeah, I guess I've have you know buyers and sellers and sort of all price ranges, but um, those are some of the more recent questions I've had. Yeah. Ask me, and uh, that makes sense. And you mentioned um, we had a visitor right before we started shooting today, and you were, you mentioned a site that uh, people should go to for a more up to date um, kind of glimpse at what rates are. 
Yeah, sure. Yeah. If you're just clicking around on the web and you want to want to check out, you know, news news uh, about the mortgage industry and, and rates, you you can go to Mortgage News Daily. Uh, they're they're a website that a lot of the industry uses. Um, more, mortgage rates are backed by the bond market, and so it's a little difficult for an, an everyday mom and pop, uh, Joe and Jane, to go and pull up uh, mortgage information. But you you can use Mortgage News Daily, and it will give you a pretty good eyeball of the industry insider type information. It might have been some uh, an insider tip that I wasn't supposed to share. No, all yeah, good. And, and go, listen, but... if you if you want other information, <laughs> the other website to keep in mind, you always can go to DevaneyMortgage.com. Come, oh, come, <laughs> come come and check out my page, and uh, I'm more than happy to field any questions that you have on your specific situation. Mm -hmm. Everyone's situation is going to be a little bit different, but we're happy to talk to you about your unique goals. Yeah, so please reach out to Jeremy, reach out to myself, follow their information below and in, uh, in all the, the comments and description. But uh, thank you all for watching. I'm sure you'll have some questions as, uh, you know, more information comes out and things are always changing. But uh, please feel free to reach out. We'll be happy to help you. Thanks so much for having me on, Matt. You got it, buddy. Thank Take you. Care.